So in this problem, we're going to find, we're asked to find the pH of a solution prepared by mixing acetic acid with sodium acetate. And we can see we're mixing one mil of 0.1 molar acetic acid with nine mils of 0.1 molar sodium acetate. In this problem, again, we're going to start with a chemical reaction. But one of the things we need to recognize is when we think about acetic acid, the formula is CH3COOH. And sodium acetate, the sodium is a spectator, right? So sodium is just a Na plus, and the acetate is CH3COO minus. And what's important is these two molecules are conjugate acid base pairs, right? The only difference between these two molecules is that here we have the proton, and in the case of acetate, the proton's gone. So they only differ by a proton. And that's really important for us because when we go to write a chemical reaction, once you're dealing with a problem that has weak acid and its conjugate base, both present. At that point, this is a buffer problem, right? And we know that because we have both the conjugate weak acid conjugate base pair present. So the reaction we're going to write for this, we're always going to deal with buffers by dealing from the perspective of the acid. We're going to have weak acid plus water goes to our acetate plus hydronium. All right, this is the, the equilibrium we're going to deal with. And then if we want to go ahead and solve this, what we would do is we could start to set up our ice table. And in this case, before we can get to the ice table, we're going to have to figure out what our concentrations are. Um, and we're going to have to do a little bit of conversions here because we're told we're mixing 9 mils of a 0.1 solution of sodium acetate with 1 mil of a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid. So we're going to have to figure out what the concentration of each of those acetic acid and acetate is after those two volumes have been mixed. So what I mean by that is we're going to take our acetic acid first and first figure out how many moles we have. And so we, we have one milliliter, so 0 0.001 liter times 0 0.1 molar. Oops, let's clean that up a little bit. Molar. And so that's going to end up being, um, sorry about that, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. And then for our sodium acetate, we're going to have 0 0.009 liters times 0 0.1 molar. And so we're going to get 9.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. So now we can find the concentration of each. And we're going to say that the concentration of acetic acid, let's get a little bit more space on that. We're going to say the concentration of acetic acid is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles divided by 0 0.01 liters in the concentration of acetate is 9.0 times 10 to the fourth over 0 0.01 liters. And so our two concentrations we end up with are 0 0.01 molar and 0 0.09 molar. Those values we can plug into our ice table. So what we're seeing is initially we have 0 0.01 
molar acetic acid. And initially, we have 0 0.09 molar acetate. At this point, you have two ways of solving this problem. We could continue our ice table, say that'd be x, 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 we have no hydronium, 0 0.01 minus x, 0 0.09 plus x, and x. And you can continue with our, with our calculations um, as we've done before. But the other thing to take note is we do know this is a buffer solution. We know it's a buffer solution because we have large amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base both present at the start of the reaction. So once we see that, we can go ahead and consider using the henderson hasselbach equation, where the pH equals the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid. And if we go ahead and do this, this becomes a much simpler calculation. So as we can say the pH is equal to the pKa, we can look up the pKa of acetic acid, or you can look up the Ka and then convert it to pKa. And so that's 4.77, that's a constant, plus the log. And now we can see all we have to do is take our concentrations. So our weak base, 0 0.09, and our weak acid, 0 0.01. And now we can see it's a much simpler calculation. So the pH is going to end up being 5.72. And we've bypassed our ice table and our quadratic and any assumptions um, by directly using the henderson hasselbach equation. And again, this equation can save us a lot of time. It's very powerful, but it only works when you have a buffer. And the way you know you have a buffer is when you have both weak acid and its conjugate base both present at the start of the reaction. Thank you.